This is our home. Some might call it empty. Some call it sterile. Some even call it sad and depressing. We call it peace. You know, when you've spent years constantly feeling overwhelmed with your home and all the things in it, when you finally create some space by letting go and decluttering, it feels like you can finally breathe. You begin to appreciate less, even though it might mean at the expense of having a less trendy or even aesthetic home. Today, we want to tell you a few reasons why owning less makes it possible for you to have less stress in your life. I mean, we could all benefit from that, right? We inevitably had less things to maintain. Something that I've invested in after buying a house is lawn care equipment. Now, normally I wouldn't invest in tools that I'd only use once. Normally I'd, I would just hire out. But with the lawn, I really wanted to take charge in it since we bought our house. And it's kind of become a hobby for me. I'm a grass dad now. So I've bought some lawn care equipment and these things take time and energy for me to maintain. I don't know if I'm not thoughtful, I might start investing in things that I think I might use often or I think it's nice to have. And it's really interesting how clever we are at convincing ourselves why we need something. But when the excitement of having those things fade, we realize we gotta maintain it. It takes time, it takes money, it takes energy. And that's not to say that we should never own anything that requires maintenance, but things don't only take physical inventory. They also take mental inventory. And being aware of this has really helped me in the long run when it comes to making sure that I don't buy and own things that will take more time, more energy, and more money away from me. I don't know what it is, but once I started to let go of things more freely, especially sentimental items, I just felt like more and more weight was being lifted off of my shoulders. I would sometimes hold on to things that people told me that I should hold on to, but I didn't really know why. And I would hold on to these things, but I didn't really have a strong meaning for them. And so the more stuff that I kept, the pile just kept growing. I mentioned one of the hardest things for me to let go of were my trophies. I played baseball my whole life. My dad was a baseball player. Baseball was everything to me. It was what I wanted to do is my dream. My dream was to become a professional baseball player just like my dad was. And so I would hold on to anything that would remind me of those days. And I held on to my trophies and I had a lot of trophies, but these trophies, a lot of them were broken and they didn't really fit the aesthetic of the home. So we didn't have them out. I didn't put them on display. And so we tucked them away in a closet and they weren't taking any space visually but they were taking space mentally and emotionally for me. And a bunch of times after Carlene started our minimalism journey a few years ago, she would ask me, do you want to hold on to these trophies? Do you want to let go of them? And I would always, without hesitation, say, I want to, I want to keep them. But I didn't know why I wanted to keep them. They were tucked away in a closet. I never pulled them out. I never thought about them. I never put them on display. They just moved from house to house and into the next stowaway closet that we had. It wasn't until about four years ago when we had our nephews over and we were decluttering this closet. And so we had to pull the trophies out and one of my nephews looked at it and said, I want these trophies. And I said, why? They, they don't even have your name on them. And he said, I'm gonna tell my friends that they're mine anyways. And I just thought, okay, yeah, have them. The minute I did this, I felt such a huge weight being lifted off my shoulders. I could have held on to them. I could have taken them with me from house to house, but why? That is something that I think all of us need to ask ourselves when we decide to keep something. Why? Why do I want to keep this? Ask ourselves, is it taking up emotional and mental space? Is it making my life better if I get rid of these? things, will my life be better? I know it's not easy, but the minute I did this, I just felt the momentum just surge and I was able to just let go of so much more. And honestly, when I look back, I wish I would have let go of them so much sooner.
feel like there's something that happens in our souls, in our minds, once we start decluttering. We put so much meaning into the things that we own and the things that we feel that we've worked so hard to achieve. But if all of that is stripped away, then we have to ask ourselves, what is in our lives that, are, that provides meaning? For me, that's the family that Carlene and I have created. There's so many special moments that are happening before my eyes. There's so many firsts for my kids that I want to experience. And no matter how many times I tell myself that I need to do this, I find myself not always being present. This is why it's so important to me to be able to have the capacity to be in the moment. I don't fully understand the science behind it all, but once Carlene and I started to declutter, we felt ourselves having more fulfillment and having more space for the things that we love and have more tension and more ability to be in the present. We felt more full, which is weird to say because we're letting go of so many things, but I feel like the things that provide the most sustenance, fulfillment in our life were allowed to blossom inside of our soul so much more because we didn't tie our meaning to so many things. All the things that we let go of, they no longer occupied space. I really love this idea and I, I can't stress it enough for anybody who might be considering to declutter their life because the reason that you're thinking about this is because you found yourself in a place where you have too much. You realize that you want things to change. You want something different. Act in that moment because the most beautiful things, the things that give you the most joy in life, those are the things that are waiting on the other side. I mentioned earlier that once we bought a house, I became obsessed with having the best lawn ever. And so I started researching on how to have the best grass and what are the right tools and what do you have to put down on the lawn and, and all those things. But I'm really selective in what I invest myself in or even invest my money in. But oddly enough, this is something that I have a lot of fun doing and I enjoy it. So having less commitments in my life, having less baggage, having less things that I need to maintain allows me to have the time to do something that I really actually enjoy doing. Something so simple as cutting the grass, fertilizing the grass, and all the, the fun stuff in between. We get so wrapped up in being committed to things that we don't actually enjoy and having things that we don't really want to maintain that we lose the space and freedom to, to do the things that we were wired to want to do, the things that we were wired to be drawn to. And I've noticed in my life, when I don't give myself the space to do those things that I'm drawn to, I am so much more stressed, I'm unhappy, I have no fulfillment. And it doesn't matter how productive I am, how much money I have, or how great my life appears on the outside, my soul, my being is just, it's just not happy. So this is a priority to me and I will never go back to committing myself to things that I don't fully enjoy, that take me away and don't give me the space to do the things that I'm wired to love doing. You'll have less overwhelm visually. I don't know about you, but there would have been times in the past where I would clean up the house, clean up the kitchen. Even when we started to minimize and we started to declutter, when I would clean, so this was back when we lived in the townhouse, if you've been following us for a while. Even back when I would clean, I sat, I had a lot of things on the countertops, like spice rack, knife block, coffee mugs, just random things. And then I had a wall that was like a collage. So even though the space was clean, it felt cluttered. So it didn't feel clean. It didn't feel like how I wanted to feel. So having less has made us feel like the house is cleaner 
it looks more visually pleasing, looks more put together. Like if someone comes over, I don't feel like I have to run and like put stuff away. So. Let's be real. Finances can be a real struggle for people. And a lot of us who have tried to declutter our homes and get rid of some things are just trying to figure out how do we keep it this way? Now, decluttering can be therapeutic. It can be fun for some people, but for others, it feels a little bit like work and it's not something that we would like to constantly be doing. So then we have to figure out how do we keep the clutter from coming back? If you find yourself constantly looking around your house and wondering why is there so much clutter always, you can likely open up your bank statement and see why. A lot of us just like to buy stuff. We like new things. We like to buy things for just in case, or we buy things that we don't really need often or even in the moment. And then we just find ourselves with more and more stuff. It can be really hard to figure out why do I do this? But if you really allow yourself to ask yourself the question, you can start to really see the root of why you buy things. It might be out of scarcity. Maybe it's you're just impulse buying, or maybe you just like to buy new things. I've found myself doing this a lot. What I like to do when I have this itch or impulse is instead of beating myself up or making myself feel bad, I like to just allow myself to be in that moment, allow myself to experience whatever that itch is and observe it. And when I'm able to really just see it from a high 30,000 foot view, I can tell myself that I don't need to act on this impulse right now. I don't need to act. It's okay that I'm having this feeling, but I don't really need to act on it. Once you can approach an urge like this, it becomes so much easier not to just act on every impulse that you feel. What's great about this is you'll end up having more money. You'll have more money in your budget and you'll have more money in your bank account, more to save. Look, financial stress is tough. It's one of the worst things that you can experience. And I think just globally is something that a lot of us are dealing with. But I just feel like if we can use minimalism to help us have less financial stress, I think we'll just have an overall better quality of life. You might be thinking about how you can declutter some things today to have less stress. Well, this video right here will show you a few things you can get rid of right now. We love you guys and we'll see you in the next video.